All right, so nice to meet everyone. My name is Jack. Uh, I am the SE lead at Weights and Biases. And um, before I actually came over to Weights and Biases to build a system of record, I was a practicing ML engineer. So I used to work in computer vision. And uh, a really big problem that I faced repeatedly over and over again was collaborating with other engineers, working together, making sure we didn't repeat the same work that somebody else had already done, taking the experimental results we had gathered and actually um, communicating that to non-technical stakeholders in a way that made sense to them. And uh, even just being able to understand how the model we pushed into production last week was created. You know, a few weeks later, we wouldn't even know exactly what slice of data we'd use to build that model, what the operating system was used to, uh, to, to train that model on, things that the data engineering team needed to know. And uh, it got really, really messy really quick. And so this here is actually an example set of, uh, of notes that the, the founder of our company was using to keep track of his ML experiments when he was at OpenAI. So pretty rudimentary for you know, a pretty bleeding edge uh, artificial intelligence company to be keeping track of all their experiments uh, in a notes file. But that's how they were doing it just a few short years ago. And uh, we were a little more fancy at the company I used to work at. We used uh, spreadsheets. So this was pretty awesome. Able to actually maybe run like a, an aggregation on accuracies, see which experiments were performing well versus not performing very well. Uh, and then we really stepped into the future and started using TensorBoard. And uh, this worked OK. You know, when we were a really small seed level startup, we had between one and two ML practitioners. Um, two, this worked for, once we built up to four, this got a little bit less tenable. We started accidentally repeating work that had already been done. Uh, and as soon as the company scaled even more, this got really, really unmanageable. Uh, additionally, you know, when we had results that we wanted to talk about with each other, we would work in our, our Python notebooks. We might have to email back and forth uh, session histories to ask other people what was going on with our experiment. Additionally, we had to actually keep track of things in Confluence because that's the way that management wanted things kept track of. We had stakeholders asking for presentations in PowerPoint. We had conversation threads in, in Teams and in Slack. And very quickly, this is how we kind of all felt um, when we were presenting. It was just a nightmare. Uh, and so there's a few principles for, for an ML workflow that I kind of want to walk through today and talk about how weights and biases can help enable some of these. And so this is by far uh, not an exhaustive list. There's lots of other probably really great principles for an ML workflow, but these are three big ones, especially in enterprise. And so auditability, the ability to understand model provenance, you know, how did that production model get created, down to the individual uh, data record, what, model, uh, what data was it trained on, what operating system did we use, if your model makes a, a bad prediction, um, maybe providing a paper trail to those regulatory bodies who are going to ask exactly what happened. Uh, reproducibility, so once again, if maybe your, your star data scientist or ML engineer leaves the team three months into a project, all that knowledge could walk out the door with them. Uh, you definitely want to keep track of that. Uh, additionally, what if your model file that you're going to send to production gets corrupted or lost? How do you quickly reproduce and replace that model? It's another answer that uh, we did not have one for. And then also collaboration. So when you have teams of engineers working together, how do they effectively make sure that they're not repeating work someone else has done? How do they leverage each other's insights to drive experimentation forwards and be effective? And how do you actually take really technical results from training an ML model and communicate that to somebody without a mathematical background or demonstrate how it's actually valuable for the business? So we'll start with auditability. And you know, once you have a number of different engineers working together, if they're logging data in a siloed way, it's not very effective. But what you can do with WMB is actually centralize that into one dashboard have a number of different engineers collaborating on a project together, place all their experimental results into one namespace, and let them actually build visualizations, understand how that project is trending, how accuracies, losses are actually impacting um, across the team. And on top of performance metrics, you also want to be able to keep track of data lineage. So be able to, at the end of the day, understand exactly how your model that you produced and sent to production was created, what steps of data transformation were used along the way, and, and have that be recorded and kind of you know, kept for all time to either answer for, uh, for regulation or just to be able to maintain knowledge preservation. And especially as your, your projects scale up and you have many, many iterations of experimentation, many slices of data, it can get very, very messy quick if you don't have a, a standardized way to keep track of this. And you know, now when you have a question, like another team, you know, you're sending off a model to production and they need to know, how did you build this model? What operating system did you use when you trained it? 
What's the set of package dependencies that were used when you trained this model? What engineer built this model? It was responsible for actually executing the process that built it. Well, with weights and biases, you can just take this, this directed acyclic graph that we'll generate for you, trace right back to the actual process that created that model, and have all that information captured for you automatically. So input hyperparameters, system metrics, how was the hardware performing while this bout of execution was, was, um, was going? All things you can keep track of pretty easily. So kind of tip of the iceberg, but some really important stuff for you know, preserving knowledge across an ML project. And so we also want to talk about reproducibility. And so you have a model that you actually need to be able to build again because the model file was corrupted after you sent it off to production. Or um, when you want to be able to preserve key knowledge, uh, key person risk. You know, that person who built the model actually left the company. That knowledge is going to walk out the door with them if you don't actually have a way to keep track of that. And then you lose that model. It's gone forever. Good luck trying to reproduce it, especially with things that are so ephemeral, like random seeds, uh, data that's changing all the time. Data that you trained on is different from the real world data that model needs to be served into now. Well, once again, when you have something like a data lineage or provenance graph, it becomes pretty trivial to actually trace back, recreate that exact model that maybe you produced before. Or maybe you actually want to iterate on experimentation. You want to be able to take the process that produced the model that you created, change like one hyperparameter, maybe adjust the dropout, adjust the batch size, keep everything else the same, all the way down to the Python dependencies, the operating system, and you want to be able to do that quickly and iterate fast. Those are other capabilities you can actually do um, directly in weights and biases. So leveraging this product we have called Launch, you can actually take a process you've executed before, adjust maybe a couple little things about it, and redeploy that entire process down to the individual git commit or uncommitted changes that you used. So really important to be able to maintain knowledge, speed up, experiment, iteration, and uh, get to value faster when you're trying to build a model across a team. And so last but definitely not least is collaboration. And so it's excellent if data scientists and ML engineers have a product that they really like to use that allows them to stay organized. But at the end of the day, uh, the people who are actually paying all those data scientists and ML engineers salaries and have invested all this money into uh, a huge functionality around ML, they're going to want to see that, their pro uh, that that investment is returning. They're going to want to see that these models that they're producing are valuable for the business. Uh, additionally, there might be other tangential teams, like a data engineering team, who's not so concerned with experimentation or research, but they still need to understand maybe how the hardware that's being leveraged is being impacted, um, how long did this model take to train, how much compute does it actually use when you're running inference on this model, things like that. Maybe a project manager needs to understand if they're more junior ML engineers or effectively using the compute available to them. They want to be able to monitor that as well. And so when you have all these different use cases for trying to communicate information about an ML project, you want to be able to take that information that you've captured in your dashboard and shape it for a number of different audiences. So directly from a dashboard, be able to contextualize the results you have have this dashboard be live and dynamic or static, maybe a mixture of both, depending on what you're trying to communicate, and really be able to take all the information you've captured across a project, distill it for the proper audience. And you also want that to be flexible and generalizable compared to what you're actually keeping track of. So if you're doing some, some NLP work and you're trying to see what different BERT architecture is really going to perform the best for your use case, you want to be able to contextualize that. Maybe additionally, you're performing hyperparameter optimization. You need to communicate those results to the team that's actually going to deploy this model or an engineer who in the future is going to pick up the work that you're leaving off. Or maybe you just have a really complex set of different parameters that you want to be able to organize in one place. Lots of different things you can actually accomplish with the, with the reporting functionality of WMB. So really powerful. It's nice for engineers to be able to have kind of one set of APIs to use, one dashboard they're used to using, and uh, be able to keep track of all of those things in, in one place. And so just a little bit about the platform in general. So I kind of mentioned a few things you can do with it. And there's a number of major pieces. And so we have artifacts, which is really uh, essentially an object you can define in code that lets you version and uh, automatically lineage all of the data involved with your ML processes. You have a product called tables, which is used for visualizing all that data richly. So you can think of tables as essentially a data frame that can accept unstructured data into any of the vectors of the table itself. You have experiment tracking, kind of the bread and butter of this product, the ability to wrap any process in what's called a WANDB init call. So essentially contextualize it in an object and be able to keep track of all the information about that executing process. 
If you want to execute hyperparameter optimization directly from the UI, it's doable as well through our Sweeps product. And then arguably the most important is the ability to take all that information you gather in experimentation and distill it into a readable format, a live dashboard, or you know, be able to uh, shape results for different people. So some more nascent features of the product are our launch functionality, so essentially an abstracted orchestration tool that lets you schedule triggers or events. So when a new data set is uploaded from the data engineering team and they apply a specific tag to it, maybe you want to automatically kick off model training without having to go do that manually. And say that bout of model training completes the accuracy is over some threshold you define, you want to automatically evaluate that model to see if it's a candidate for production. Those are new features that'll be uh, available relatively soon. We kind of have the MVP of launch out now. And then a roadmap item for 2022 is a more full-blown production monitoring tool integrated directly with weights and biases. Really looking to close a loop and essentially create a full-blown CI CD system for the, the MLDC, which we already have you know, for traditional software. Doesn't really quite exist yet for, for machine learning. And so a lot of this sounds great, and the, the core weights and biases platform is actually a SaaS product. And uh, of course, in, in finance, I'm not sure how many people are able to, to leverage uh, internet-based SaaS products. But just like the rest of the uh, pieces of the platform, it's deployment agnostic. So you can deploy this really wherever you're leveraging or where you're executing computation, fully on-premises, in your own VPC or AWS sub-account, any of the major cloud providers. Uh, those are all options. Additionally, it's agnostic to where you're executing compute or storing data. So there's a lot of you know, um, customers we have that are currently in the process of maybe exploring cloud compute. You know, they call them uh, cloud curious. And they have a lot of compute happening on premises, maybe a little bit in the cloud, seeing what's going on. They want to be able to keep track of all of that information in one place. That's completely doable with WMB. And it's also agnostic to whatever framework you're using. So as long as you're executing processes and leveraging data as input to and outputs of those processes, you can track all of that with, with WMB. We have a lot of uh, high-level integrations with a number of the popular ML frameworks. But we also have a number of grad students who are kind of relegated to building their models in a raw NumPy. And they can actually keep track of whatever they're doing as well. Albeit it'll be a little bit more code instrumentation for them than somebody using something like uh, PyTorch Lightning or Hugging Face. Those are pretty low code. But really, no matter what you're using, you can keep track of it with, with WMB. And so overall, it's really just a product to optimize your ML workflow. You want to be able to track, compare, and visualize things with a very few lines of code, understand how the hardware is being impacted by the software you're running on it, version all the data that's associated with those ML processes, and then collaborate on all the insights that you gather during a project, share that with the team, use it to teach new engineers coming on board, use it to communicate results to stakeholders, to team leads, to data engineers, all different personalities and role types across the organization, and really just bring a visualization and, uh, and insight into exactly what's going on during your projects. And so uh, one of our favorite quotes from one of our early customers, Toyota Research, is they actually use WMB as their official record for all the models they build. So it's essentially like their, their GitHub for their machine learning processes. It's their total system of record. And um, yeah, we're really looking to explore how this can be a lot more um, useful for, for a lot of people in the financial industries, insurance industries, and just across the board. If you're executing computation, you're using data as input and output. It's a candidate for being tracked with, with weights and biases. And so I definitely want to invite you to give it a try. Uh, you actually can just go to weights and biases, wannabe.ai slash home. You can sign up for a free account. Granted, that will be the SaaS solution, so maybe uh, not, don't, don't be doing that at work with, uh, with sensitive data. But if you're at home, we have lots of excellent examples in our, on our documentation page in our GitHub, Git repository. There's collabs you can step through, execute code, see exactly how the API calls interact. We have a really, really rich community. So if you go to uh, the, the second link you see there, you can explore our entire Weights and Biases community, where lots of academics will actually come in, share insights, talk about new research, state-of-the-art models, new ways to do applied ML as well. Uh, we also have what's called our fully connected gallery, which is a really rich place. It's a uh, big database, essentially, of all of the community-created reports that we saw before. So if you're actually just looking to learn about like a new ML technique and you want to see all the logged data and the project that that uh, came from, you can find those in the fully connected gallery. We have a pretty awesome YouTube. Um, our CEO actually runs a podcast, which is called Gradient Descent, which has some of you know the the fourth uh, like the the big leaders in the ML space come on there and uh, speak with him. We actually recently had Jensen from Nvidia the CEO, so that was a really exciting podcast for us. 
we're really active on Twitter as well. So also check us out there. And uh, I would definitely be in trouble if I didn't uh, say that we're also hiring. And so if anybody wants to come work for us, let us know. And that's it. I would love to take any questions if, if anybody has any.